Today we're going to cover 8 common types of wireless attacks. Wi-Fi networks can be vulnerable to a variety of different attacks. Because of this, it's important to be aware of them so you can take the necessary steps to prevent them and reduce their impact. The first is Packet Sniffing when any data has to be transmitted over the computer network, it is broken down into smaller units at the sender's node called data packets and reassembled at receiver's node in original format. It is the smallest unit of communication over a computer network. It is also called a block, a segment, a datagram or a cell. The act of capturing data packet across the computer network is called packet sniffing. It is similar to as wire tapping to a telephone network. It is mostly used by crackers and hackers to collect information illegally about network. It is also used by ISPs, advertisers, and governments. The second is Rogue Access Point. A rogue access point is an access point installed on a network without the network owner's permission. Why is this bad? If an attacker owns the access point, they can intercept the data flowing through the network. This is why the coffee shop provided the warning to its customers. They wanted to stop an unauthorized access point on their network from intercepting users' data. We should think twice before connecting to a free wireless hotspot in public locations such as coffee shops or airports. If we see something odd, we should notify the network owner. The third is Evil Twin Attack. An evil twin attack takes place when an attacker sets up a fake Wi-Fi access point hoping that users will connect to it instead of a legitimate one. When users connect to this access point, all the data they share with the network passes through a server controlled by the attacker. An attacker can create an evil twin with a smartphone or other internet-capable device and some readily available software. Evil twin attacks are more common on public Wi-Fi networks which are unsecured and leave your personal data vulnerable. The fourth is War Driving. War Driving in cybersecurity is the act of looking for publicly accessible Wi Fi networks, usually from a moving vehicle, using a laptop or smartphone. The software used for War Driving is freely available on the internet. Your smartphone sometimes tells you that there is a wireless network available and asks if you want to connect to it. That's because when your smartphone's wireless capability is turned on, it's constantly scanning for Wi-Fi, so it knows when you happen to pass by an available network. At its most basic level, that's what war driving is. War drivers use hardware and software to find Wi-Fi signals in a particular area. Often, their objective is to identify vulnerable Wi-Fi networks that they can exploit. From moving vehicles or the driving part of war driving, they attempt to locate vulnerable networks for later potential use in attacks or the war part of war driving. Once found, war drivers may submit the information to third-party websites and apps to create digital maps. The fifth is Bluejacking. Bluejacking is a hacking method that lets a person send unsolicited messages typically flirtatious, but can also be malicious to any Bluetooth-enabled device within his own device's range. Also known as blue hacking, the process begins by scanning one's surroundings for discoverable Bluetooth-capable devices. Bluejacking is much like doorbell ditching, wherein a person rings someone's doorbell and disappears before the homeowner can answer the door. The sixth is blue snarfing. Blue snarfing is a process of stealing data from unsuspecting victims via Bluetooth connections. Cyber attacks highly skilled on the job manipulate the Bluetooth technology to get into any device that has its Bluetooth turned on. Bluetooth hacking is not limited to mobile phones. It can happen with laptops, tablets, and other digital devices that support Bluetooth. Hackers using blue snarfing can easily get into your contacts, images, messages, videos, and even extract your passwords from your gadgets in the shortest time. The seventh is war chalking. War chalking refers to drawing symbols in public spaces to denote an open Wi-Fi wireless network in a public space. War chalking provides information about the type of wireless connection being used, which may be open node, closed node or wired equivalent privacy node. This may attract hackers and make them aware of the Wi-Fi hotspot and its security. Hackers may use this information to attack the Wi-Fi network. The eighth is 
WEP attack. Wired Equivalent Privacy is a security protocol that attempted to provide a wireless local area network with the same level of security as a wired LAN. Since physical security steps help to protect a wired LAN, WEP attempts to provide similar protection for data transmitted over WLAN with encryption. WEP uses a key for encryption. There is no provision for key management with wired equivalent privacy, so the number of people sharing the key will continually grow. Since everyone is using the same key, the criminal has access to a large amount of traffic for analytic attacks. Thanks for watching this article so far. If you like these videos then please share them with your friends and don't forget to subscribe and to like this video. If you have any questions or feedback then please drop a comment. And which is best for you, drop on the comment. Thank you for subscribing.